Dear students, I, Mr. Vishal Shah, once again welcome you all to this my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the what are the different applications of the UV visible spectrophotometer. Now, in previous video, we have discussed about the which are the different detectors that are used in the UV spectrophotometer. Now, if you have not watched these videos, just I request you, you can watch the previous videos and if you like, you can share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, let's begin with our today's session that is the applications of UV visible spectrophotometer. Before that, yes, we will see what are the learning outcomes of this session. After this session, students will be able to explain the applications of UV visible spectroscopy. Actually, when we are going to consider the applications of UV spectroscopy, it is used along with the other spectrophotometers like IR and NMR to carry out the determination of structure of the different compounds. Alone, QV spectroscopy will not give too much information about the structure of the molecule. So, there are various applications of UV spectroscopy are there like qualitative analysis, then it is used for the detection of impurities. One of the prominent application of UV spectroscopy is quantitative analysis then molecular weight determination. It is also used in the chemical kinetics that is the, to study the rate of the reaction, charge transfer transitions and tautomeric equilibrium. Here we are mainly dealing with the quantitative analysis because UV spectroscopy is mainly used for the quantitative analysis. So let us begin about the application of UV spectroscopy in quantitative analysis. Now there are three different applications are there where we are going to use UV spectroscopy. First one is spectrophotometric titration, second one is single component analysis and multi component analysis. In this video we are going to discuss the spectrophotometric titrations and the single component analysis. So, first we will start with the spectrophotometric titrations. Now, we can use this UV visible spectrophotometer when either the titrant, titrate or the product are absorbing the radiations. Means they should not be colorless. In this case only we can use this spectrophotometric titrations. Now, in conventional titration, we know that the endpoints are determined by visual inspection. For example, you can consider this diagram. Many of you have performed these types of the titrations which are known as the volumetric analysis where we are going to take a solution in the burette which is known as the titrant. Titrant means what? It is a solution which is having the known concentration and we are going to place a titrate that is the substance that is determined in the conical flask. From burette, we are going to add the solution and when there is an end point, color change is observed in this particular conical flask. Means, the whatever the end point is there that is determined with the help of the visual inspection. So, there may, may be chances that the errors are incorporated and that is why in the UV spectroscopy having advantage that end point is determined by using absorbance. Now, these all titrations are based on the Beer's law that we know it is Beer's law states that the A absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration. Now, titration curve is nothing but the plot of absorbance versus the concentration. Here, this is the typical titration curve where you can see that the absorbance and volume of titrants are placed. Here you can see that the initially absorbance is less but once we are going to carry out the addition of the titrant absorbance increases up to certain level and after that it remains the constant. Then when this 
are extrapolated to the x axis we will get the end point that is the volume of titan that is required that is nothing but the, your burette reading in the conventional method now what are the advantages of spectrophotometric titrations determination is carried out at the small concentration very small concentration even in the nanograms also we can determine with the help of the this spectrophotometric titration which is not possible with the conventional titration and missing endpoint is not problem because we are not going to carry out the visual inspection so there are four different types of spectrophotometric titrations are there first when titrate absorbs the radiation and titrant and reaction product do not absorb the radiation so when titrate is absorbing the radiation in that case initially absorbance is high as titrant absorbs the radiation and as we continue the titration absorbance decreases for example here we will consider the titration between the edta and the ferric ions here as we know that this titrate is capable of absorbing the radiations this titrant is not absorbing the radiations and the product that is the edta and ferric when they react with each other complex is formed that complex is also not able to absorb the radiations so initially due to the presence of ferric ion the absorbance is more as shown in this particular graph so as soon as we add the edta ferric ions will react with the edta and there will be formation of the complex so ferric ion concentration decreases and due to which the fall in the absorbance is observed up to certain level and after that once ferric ions are not present in our sample then the there will be constant absorbance is observed and when we extrapolate this to x axis we will get the volume of titan that is required for the determination of the end point so this is about the first titration that is the titrate absorb the radiations then second type of the titration is the titrant absorb the radiation and titrate and reaction product do not absorb the radiation so as here titrant is absorbing remember titrant is present in the burette so initially absorbance is constant as titrate do not absorb the radiation and as we are going to get out the titration absorbance increases for example bruminating mixture and arsenic chloride here bruminating mixture is absorbing the radiation and arsenic chloride is not absorbing the radiation so here as i said initially the absorbance is constant and as we go to the performance of the titration absorbance increases means if the bruminating mixture concentration is increases then our absorbance go on increasing so at the after end point only bruminating mixture will be there so that it uh, increases the absorbance and when we plot this at extrapolate we will get the end point in this way these titrations are also used third type of the spectrophotometric titration is when reaction product absorbs the radiation and titrate and titrant also do not absorb the radiation in this case initially absorbance is less as product absorb the radiation so initially our solution will be consisting of titrate so that absorbance will be less as titration proceeds absorbance increases and after end point it remains the constant for example a titration between the edta and cuso4 here you can see this type of graph is observed because initially as our solution is only consisting of titrate here the absorbance is less and once we will carry out the titration the product will be formed between the complex between edt and cuso4 and which is uh, which is responsible for absorbing the radiation so that concentration increases in this way this is the third type of titration is performed then four type of titration is that titrant and titrate both absorb the radiation and reaction product do not absorb the radiation initially as titrate is absorbing the radiation here the absorbance is more and as titration proceeds absorbance decreases and after end point 
our solution will be consisting of titan which is also responsible for the absorbing the radiations so that again this absorbance increases for example titration between the liquid bromine and the red dye here this type of graph is observed here titrate will be present so that the absorbance is high as titrate and titrans are reacted because reaction product does not show any absorbance at the end point reaction product will be there so that if we extrapolate this we will get the volume of titrant so these are the various spectrophotometric titrations are there which can be performed to carry out the determination of different concentration second application of uv visible spectrophotometer is single component analysis now what is the meaning of single component analysis now if our sample is consisting of only drug means single drug that absorbs the radiation and whatever the excipients that are present these excipients does not absorb the radiations at the lambda max of given drug these types of titrations uh, the standardizations are known as the single component analysis and we can perform the assay of such a drugs now there are three different methods are there by which we can perform the single component analysis first one is use of standard absorptivity value second method which is commonly used that is the use of calibration graph third method either single or double point standardization so single component analysis can be carried out by using these three different method first we will discuss the standard absorptivity value now this procedure is actually adapted by official books like indian pharmacopoeia british pharmacopoeia in this case the substances have broad absorption bands which are unaffected by the instrumental parameters that's why they are determined by using the standard absorptivity value here either we are going to use a specific absorbance or molar absorptivity for the calculation of unknown concentration in case of specific absorbance the formula that is used is equal to a is equal to a 1% 1 cm b c where capital a is nothing but the absorbance then a 1% 1 cm is nothing but the specific absorbance b is nothing but the path length that is the width of the our covet and c is nothing but the concentration and for molar absorptivity we are going to determine the unknown concentration by using the formula a is equal to epsilon b c where epsilon is molar absorptivity b is again path length and c is the concentration in this way this particular method is used for determination of the absorptivity value in this method there is no need of reference standard as well as the standard solution so that is the difference between the single and multi component analysis as well as the standard absorptivity value second method is use of calibration graph which is commonly used in this case a reference standard substance is required four to six reference standard solutions of different concentrations are prepared and absorbance of standard and sample solution is measured absorbance of standard solution is plotted against the concentration and when we plot this graph we will get the straight line and if we use the unknown solution then this is also extrapolated to get the determination of the concentration of that particular solution then last method is single or double point standardization in this case a reference standard substance is required sample and standard solution should be prepared in the same manner concentration of standard solution should be close to the sample solution and in single point standardization method only one sample solution is prepared and the concentration is determined by c test is equal to a test into c standard that is the concentration of standard divided by absorbance of the standard and in case of the double point standardization method two standards are used in previous only we have used the one and one sample solution is prepared the formula used for the determination of concentration is given over here so these are the various applications of the uv visible spectrophotometer then 
you have to go to this particular website and give the answer of the question.